George Foreman was a 4 to 1 underdog coming into the fight, and Frazier expected him to be a mere stepping stone on Ali. But George Foreman would be anything but easy. By the time Foreman fought Frazier, he had racked up 37 victories in just three years. Most of them ended by knockout in the first few rounds. It was already becoming apparent that Foreman had possibly the greatest punching power of any boxer, or perhaps any fighter, in history. But Foreman swung wide and seemed to lack technique. As such, Frazier was expected to teach him a lesson in real boxing. Staring Frazier down, looking at Eric and Pop, he turned around the ring like a child. This was partially due to Foreman's side, but Frazier had a snooker player, had entirely overlooked the rest of Foreman's skill set. What was happening, essentially, was a clash of styles. Frazier was an aggressive, especially susceptible to these techniques. His little crowd was able to easily frame off his back and shoulders and push him down. The way he turned straight into the line, he sidestepped him easily and hit him with speed arm. And Frazier knew that he was bumming to revival of the side of the Once Foreman had established his defense, he became more aggressive. Foreman caught Frazier with a Frazier response by the The fight was now becoming punching for some of the longest game of a joke. Frazier was getting out of the room every time he tried to get into him for a train. But the stalemate ended with Foreman caught him, first driving a hard up and down with his cross guard off, and then timing him as he came up to him to tightly close. Frazier moved in, gave him a jab, leaped under a car, and moved him Foreman blocked him, but then Frazier charged him. Rather than reestablish his distance, Foreman fell through. Where he could wear Foreman down, he would have taken a barrage of hard rights to Muhammad Ali. Frazier was used to take him in, but usually, he more than paid it back when he got inside. But now, the ability to win, and he could only bomb and leave the mid-range safely for so long. And Foreman was able to track Frazier's head with a charge of at this point, Foreman had lost all respect for him, and he was getting away with just pushing Frazier back to the center of the ring. Foreman's jabs began to land at work. Frazier was still able to avoid most of Foreman's more powerful follow-up punches, but his senses were dull, and he was losing his timing. But it wasn't in Frazier. Besides, Frazier found safety on the inside. He stood his ground, bobbing and weaving, trying to find a way forward. But then, he landed one more hard jab. Frazier's head snapped back. He stood his ground and dipped down with Foreman's upper. Frazier went down. This was against anyone's expectations. This was Joe Frazier. But now, he fell to the camp. Joe got back up. Foreman eager to claim victory, and Frazier desperate to stay in the fight. At first, neither man landed anything really significant. Foreman swung wide, putting everything he had into his pockets. But Frazier's Foreman narrowly avoided getting caught several times by Frazier's hooks, which still had fight-stopping power. Foreman refocused, and Frazier's head movement saved him from multiple knockout punches. It's crazy to think that any one of the blows Frazier narrowly ducked under would have sent most ordinary men to the hospital, if not the morgue. Joel was surviving, but he was backing up, and eventually, another of Foreman's jabs caught Frazier, and he felt his back bounce against the ropes. Around Foreman's garage, Frazier Foreman's jab was making the keeping Frazier just far enough away to avoid his punches. He used it to guard down repeatedly to make way for heavier punches. Frazier was getting punished and rapidly losing ground. Again, it was an uppercut that brought Joe Frazier down. Frazier got up, wobbling, trying to regain his footing. There was only a few seconds left in the round. Again, Frazier covered. Again. Frazier charged into Foreman. He fell. Frazier did make the count, and the bell rocked. He had one minute to recover. Frazier would come out to fight for the second round, but he was dazed, as if he'd been winning the fight the entire time. After 
after the third knockdown of the second round, and the sixth KO for George Foreman. When the fight was stopped, even Muhammad Ali's trainer went screaming from the crowd for the fight to end, scared that the champion would die for Foreman had reached the pinnacle of his career.
another match against Muhammad.